Getting a good night's sleep is the single most important thing you can do to ensure a good camping trip. Conversely, getting a poor night's sleep is the fastest way to ruin your trip. Even worse, a poor sleep can result in lack of focus and poor judgment. Not good things to have when you're working with sharp instruments like knives and, and axes or building a fire. The best way to ensure a good night's sleep is with a proper sleep system, which includes a quality air mattress like this Sea to Summit Ether Light XT. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on this unit, keep watching. Before we get started, I want to begin by thanking Sea to Summit for sending out the Ether Light XT so that I could share it with you. So Gina and I are car camping in Kushbaquack National Park, New Brunswick, Canada, and we've been here two weeks. We come here every year for our annual camping vacation, and of course we enjoy it here. And I had wanted to upgrade my sleeping system for some time. Reason being is, well, I'm getting older. I know, it comes as a surprise, right? But along with that come some other things I wasn't anticipating. Things like quite advanced arthritis in both of my shoulders and arthritis in my lower back. Getting a comfortable sleep does make all the difference to whether you're going to enjoy the day. And uh, I wanted to upgrade my system and Cedar Summit was very good to offer to send out this sleeping pad and it has worked out fantastic. So I've been alternating between this pad and another one that I have been testing very similar design but I'll tell you this is a much more comfortable pad for reasons I'll get into in a few moments time but it has been made a, it's been a game chamber changer that's probably the best way to say it so what I thought I would do is take you down to the ground I'll put the air pad back in its stuff sack and so I can show you how it's inflated then we'll start talking about its key features and specifications and my experiences using it okay we're going to start off by going through the inflation process so you can see what that looks like. So what I've done is I've just laid out a poly tarp here to protect the pad from the ground itself. And normally if I was using this, well, when I am using it inside of a tent, that's where I would do the inflation. Uh, it's strong enough to withstand, you know, little tiny bits of dirt and sticks and things, but why risk it? So that's why I'm doing it out here on this poly. So the, everything comes included right inside this. And what's really cool about this is the stuff sack itself is actually the inflation bag. So as a result, you have uh, cords with cord locks on either end of it. So you start by taking the bag out, of course, which can be a little tight depending on how well or how good a job you did the last time you inflated it or deflated it and rolled it down. So let's roll that out. And there we are, this side up. Now I don't have to have it laying out perfectly flat in order for this to work because as the air goes into the pad, of course it's going to spread it out and lift it. Uh, what I wanted to show you at this point though is the inflation valve itself before I hook up the pump to it. Uh, so you've got actually a two part valve. So there's two flaps. You open the top flap and that is where the air is going to be pumped into the pad and it has a check valve, a one-way valve, so air can go in but it can't come back out. However, when you're ready to tear down your camp and, and fold your, your pad up, then you lift the second pad and it's a wide open air hole so it just dumps air out very, very, very quickly. No need for any extra effort to do so. So we're going to start by opening that one up. And as I mentioned, the bag itself becomes the inflation unit for this. Now, yes, you could use a small electric air pump if you wanted to. Um, by the way, there's the repair kit with instructions on how to use it. Always great to have. I have punctured a, an air pad at one time and had no way of repairing it other than a piece of duct tape for short term. So it's nice to have that. If you're careful, of course, now this is tough material. If you're careful, you're not going to uh, damage it anyway. But you never know, right? Just in case. You don't want to be out in the backwoods and have your air pad go flat on you and then you're laying on the ground. All right, so we'll put that aside. So as I mentioned, this has, I think they call this an airstream. Uh, system and I'll show you how it works. So there is the connection point. Place that in and snap it into that point there. Now the way these bags work, it's quite ingenious. There is the main inflation bag which will hold a lot of air 
And then there's this small tube or tunnel at the top, which of course would have been the stuff sack before you uh, took everything out of it. And you blow into the bag through the tunnel, but you don't hold your face right up to it because the way it works is as you push air in through breathing, and you don't have to breathe especially hard, it actually pulls additional air in with it through its force. So demonstrate it like this. <sighs> So two light breaths, and that's much more air than my lungs are gonna hold. And then I roll the top and start to inflate. I think if I remember right, it's about eight inflations on average to get this fully inflated. Okay, I'm gonna continue the inflation process, but I'll speed it up here until it's finished, just so you don't have to watch me go through the whole thing in slow or real time. And that is it. You'll know when it's fully inflated because you're gonna meet resistance that you didn't meet before. So that's when you stop, you take the inflation bag off. No worry about air coming out, but seal the valve anyway. There we are, fully inflated. Now, I've got that to max inflation, and it depends, you know, I guess, on the person individually, what their preferences are. Um, I like, and I can use this at max inflation, but if at any time during the night I just felt that's just a little bit too firm for me, you can just open up and release a little bit of air and uh, same thing you can refill it up if you need to all right so that's the the air pad fully inflated what I'm going to do is just reposition myself so we can talk about its key features as well as its specifications and what makes the Cetus Summit Ether Light XT extra special all right I've repositioned the camera and I have myself a little stool to sit on here so I can get down nice and low next to the pad but still be comfortable of course and I have my cheat sheet here of notes of just things like the specifications so let's go over first the dimensions the weight and that type of thing then I'll get into its key features and some of the technicals that make this sleeping pad this air mat uh, special and really uh, above the majority at least if not the very best so number one the weight of this bag fully deflated and inside the stuff sack comes in at one point or one pound six ounces or 630 grams I know that's important to ultralight hikers uh, maybe not so much to per persons like myself who will even if it was heavier I would still carry this because of the advantages it has but it's still a very very light mat now in its packed size back in the pack sack it was four and a half inches by 11 inches which is 11 centimeters by 28 centimeters this is the 72 by 25 so 72 inches long by 25 inches wide and uh, that's a little larger than some of the mats that are out there I have another sea some sea to summit mat which I bought a number of years ago it's only two inches in thickness now it uses the same technology interestingly enough but it's only two inches in thickness and it's a tapered bag rounded at the top and tapered and the advantage that of course is lighter weight and smaller pack size but uh, this is actually I found having the extra space especially if you toss and turn and roll over like I do having the space to roll over on on a pad is all important so don't cheap out on yourself for in comfort get the larger pad and there is an XL version that is longer and I don't know if it's wider or not but for those are, or that are bigger than me I'm 5'10 190 so that's the should give you an estimation of how and I find this plenty big to quite honest so okay so it comes now I'll give you some of the material uh, uh, components of this I have a deer fly of course there you go get away deer fly so it is made of 30d and 40d nylon and uh, the significance of that is a couple of things one is of course durability and toughness but also tactile feel because if you're laying on this there's a couple of things that some of the older pads were known for one was being very slippery and the other one is being very noisy so this has I won't say it's it's eliminated those but it's greatly improved I don't find this a slippery surface now mind you it's still a nylon so it's still got a certain amount of slipperiness to it but it is uh, much better than some of the older pads I've tried and it's not overly crinkly noisy as well so uh, that's uh, that's a benefit of I see um, this pad of, over some of the older ones for sure now it has an R value of 3.2 so that gives it a three season ratings now this is very specific to the hiker or the camper what it is that they they are most comfortable at it is by the way an ASTM rating means it has been sent out to um, 
experts outside of CETA Summit for evaluation and given a rating. That's an extra step that not every air pad mat manufacturer does. And as a result, you don't know for sure if you want to do an apples to apples comparison, you need to have an ASTM rating. I tested another pad very similar in size and design and it rated or boasted a five hour value and uh, but the problem was is they didn't have an independent testing done so i have no idea if it is actually a five this i know based on the astm rating that it is a 3.2 in our value now what does that mean it means that this should given the rest of your system is up to the same uh, temperature rating this should keep you warm in spring through fall this is not a winter pad but a spring through fall pad so we'll call it the uh, a three season pad is what it's rated at now i know this and have done this before is if you i'm not suggesting you put two air pads together but if you take an air pad and maybe a z light one of the folding uh Finsulate foam pads or the roll up ones or some type of a foam pad, you can add to this and actually increase the R value. Uh, the reason you don't want to do two air pads is because guaranteed one will slide off the top of the other, but the foam pads seem to be a do, a do a good job. So I, I like to put one on the bottom underneath this pad, gives me better insulation from the convective forces of the ground cold or the cold ground, and then this on top, which gives me all the comfort and considerable insulation as well. But to be honest, I don't do winter camping and or at least I won't not anymore I did in the past but so I'm not uh, going to be too concerned about carrying an extra pad with me but if you wanted to use this one pad through all four seasons you could back it up with another pad underneath it okay so a couple of the fe key features are I mentioned the material itself now I'm probably going to get some of the names as C to Summit refers to them, but the design is what they call it, an air cell or a sprung air cell, I believe it is. And this is what makes this pad really stand out as being honestly the most comfortable that I have ever owned and certainly ever even tried in that matter. It is this as you can see, it looks like individual pockets all the way, almost like a spring coil pocket mattress that you might have at home. This works in very much the same way. Now, don't get me wrong. They're not all independent uh, air pockets. They are all conjoined together to make one large air pad, but it's the way that they're joined top to bottom that makes it stand out. So inside of each of these divots between any four of the pillows, there is a connection to the bottom of the mattress. It's not a direct connection. It's actually a connection through a little tube and they are using radio frequency RF welding to connect them top to bottom so that there is a tube so there is a space or a gap between this divot and the divot on the opposite side so there is a bit of a gap there and you don't have a direct contact which of course would be a weak point in terms of insulation cold could travel through that now you have an air insulation and that's giving you all the additional air insulation you need but what it also does is it tends to restrict any individual one of these air cells, we'll call the pad itself the air cell, uh, from becoming overinflated. So when you lay down on this, of course, you have parts of your body that are a little heavier than others, like your hips and your shoulders, and they're going to weigh down a little bit further. And instead of making the other areas really rise and pillow up, it tends to keep everything on a relatively level surface so you're not bouncing all over it like the old waterbed style. This will keep you very flat and at the same time provide a good, high, actually, an extreme degree of comfort because it will give to those heavier, heavier areas, and uh, but without you don't actually bottom out, so that you can you know it will conform. I guess is the best way to your body and your shape. And of course, if you are like me and you roll over a lot and you're constantly tossing and turning, then having that ability to um, always have support, even at the heavy areas, regardless of when and where I place them, and not have that wavy feeling that. It can occur from other air pads that's what makes this really stand out as being comfortable for short now they have a synthetic they call it a two-part insulation again i won't have the name correct on on what the insulation is called but it will all be in the video description but there is two types of synthetic insulation in this to give it that r value and they are hollow core fiber so if a modern synthetic 
insulation like what they like you get in some of the very best of sleeping bags but I think it's specifically tailored to see the summit's needs in 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 this pad and it is it's a pad that it won't bunch up it won't slide to one side it doesn't uh, you know crumple up all in one corner it stays evenly distributed throughout the pad so that it's going to maintain the warmth regardless so that's the the basic instructions now what I have learned is is that there is a right way and a wrong way or I should say a right side and a wrong side to have up you really want to have the side of the air pad that has the writing on it, see the summit facing up because that's going to give you that's where the insulation is. It's in the top half of the pad, and you don't want it to you have just bare air space underneath you. You want that insulation closer to your body, so that's important as well. Now, there is another feature of this pad that I've seen on nothing else, and it's see the summit's attempt to address an age old ish issue with air mattresses and, and pillows. How do you keep pillows from sliding off of your air pad? And there's been any number of uh, commercially uh, viable alternatives to keeping pillows from sliding off, like a strap, like an elasticized strap that go around the, um, the pad itself. And I think that's a great alternative. It is uh, good in that as long as the strap is long enough that you can put a little bit extra underneath your pillow to get it up to the height you want. But see the summit kind of looks, comes at it from a different point of view. And inside that little repair kit, I failed to mention this, inside the little repair kit, are a series of peel and stick Velcros. And there's a spot on the pillow right here. It, let's see if it outlines. You can probably see the outlines here where you can put these four peel and stick Velcros and stick them to the air pad. And then you have a matching pillow that would have the opposite side of the Velcro and it, you literally stick it on and it's not moving. Um, you know, some people enjoy that. That's not the style of pillow I'd like to have. I'd like to have some movement so I can position it where I'm most comfortable. But it's, it is certainly one really, you know, kind of unique way of answering that a question about how do you maintain the pillow on top of your air pad. Um, all right, I think I've given you the technicals. I've given you the specific specifications. Uh, I want to wrap it up with a little bit, talk a little bit about my experience using it. A few closing comments for the Sea to Summit Ether Light XT insulated sleeping pad or mat. Um, yeah, I've been using this, as I mentioned in my opening, for the last two weeks where Gene and I are camping out here in Kujbaquak National Park. I've been alternating between using this pad and another one that I've been testing for a separate review. And uh, it's been a good opportunity not only to test this pad out, but also to compare it against something that is very similar in design, but uh, I don't think comes up to the standard of this pad. This pad is made of, I believe, of superior materials. And even though they look very similar, there is a difference when you lay on them. And this is definitely um, the more comfortable of the two pads. In fact, it's the most comfortable sleeping pad that I have ever even sat on, laid on, or tried or slept on for two weeks. So yeah, this is really has become my go-to sleeping pad when, well, when Gene and I go camping uh, out here at Kushbaquak National Park, but even on my own when I'm going to go do overnights. Uh, and this will fulfill the niche that I have, which is, of course, just three season. I'm not doing winter camping any longer. So yeah, I would highly recommend this pad. I have only had it a relatively short period of time, about eight months or so. And this is the longest I've spent sleeping on it. So I can't give you a long-term durability uh, review of it, but I have no reason to think, well, certainly the other uh, Cedar Summit pad I have, the smaller one, has lasted me, I think I've had that one almost eight years, and it has done very well, so I have no reason to believe that this will be of any lesser quality. It's a well worth it investment for yourself. You really do, and I say this again, like I did in the opening, you really do owe it to yourself to do everything you can to get a good night's sleep. Your trip into the woods is not meant to be an endurance test. It's not a survival exercise. It's supposed to be enjoyable. So take the, the, the necessary measures to get a good night's sleep. You will appreciate it and you'll thank me for making that recommendation to you. Okay, if you have any comments or questions about the Sea to Summit Ether Light XT pad, put those in the comments section below. I will be putting all the specifications for this pad as well as the link where you can take another look at it in the video description. But until next time, get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.